what is now a class? Well, a class is generically just a type. So let's have a look at a more complicated template. Here we have a template that takes a type T. We call this class template property. And it has a public and a protected members. So in the public members we see the function set, which takes a value of type T, and then it stores this value in our storage, which is of type T. And we have a get function that returns T type, and just returning the value stored in storage. So in that sense we have now this kind of idea of a getter and setter, what we talked about, now defined as a property template. So what can we do with it? Well, we can say we have a property int. So here we have the, the int type, here the flow type, here the string type, three different properties. One we, so three variables, it looks like three variables in fact. But those three variables, they are instantiations of this class for a certain type T. Whenever you instantiate a class, as the compiler doesn't know what type it is, because there's no way to infer here, we have to specify explicitly the type that it should use for the specialization. So here we say we want to instantiate the property template with an int type. Right? So setter becomes int value, getter becomes int get signature, and here the protected internal storage becomes um, basically int storage. So now what we can do, we can take those three objects and call the functions. So we, in our integer we can set it to 5, our float we can set to 6.5, and our string we can set to a string, like hello. Yeah, and this calls then the respective functions over here with the respective type as these variables are declared. So that's really powerful concept and it's used a lot. So lastly with C14 it's also possible to um, template a single variable. So I can have here a type which is called const expression and uh, which means it's done at compile time. I'm not talking too much about it but the key point is I can say um, the type of this variable is type t and I define pi using basically this type and here I have a very long definition. So what I can do with it I can see out pi of type int so the variable I will create a variable um, for this type instantiated and specialized as integer here. So what will it do? Well it will output 3. I can output pi as float which will output this number and so on. Just that you know so this feature is something that you may rarely see but I just wanted to prepare you if you need it. So now templates are a bit more complicated in fact because you can use more than one argument, so more than one class or object type in a template. So here we have a template that takes two types, it takes type T and V, and I call this class pair. So pair has two um, public data members, a first and a second, and the first is of type T and the second is of type V. So what can I do with it? Well, I can say I want to create a pair that contains an integer and a float. You see I put this in one angular brackets. So now int float is an object of this um, class pair with the type int and float in the order as specified here as type names. So t becomes int and float becomes v. So now I can say int float dot first and this object is 5. Why does it work? Because first is of type int and second I can set to a floating point number because second is of type float. So this feature is used a lot uh, in C++. Maybe now it's time for you to think for a couple of minutes about some examples where templates could be useful. And uh, yeah, have a go and I will continue this video in 3, 2, 1. Now, welcome back. I hope you thought about it. And uh, there are many examples and I will go over a couple of examples now is part of this lecture. The first one here is what happens and showing the difficulty when you use templates by the way if you nest tab, uh, templates. So how about I want to have a tuple that consists 
of tuples as a second value. So basically I want to create a pair where the first value is of type integer and the second type is of type pair in float. Here I can absolutely declare such a type and you see it becomes a little bit lengthy but it's still clear to me what it means as long as I know the declaration of the pair template. Here I create an object in float p, uh, in float sorry, and here I create an object p just to make it a bit simpler. So um, and I can say p.first is 5. Why does it work? Because first was of type integer. Then I can say p.second. What is p.second? Well, it's of type pair in float, right? So for this p.second, I can say dot .first again equals 5 and dot .second equals 6.25, right? So you can you do a lot of nesting here and this becomes very tedious to see sometimes what it does. Right. Um, so if we want to use the template and initialize the variables easily, because that is a bit cumbersome, right? We have to do some modifications to our pair template. Particularly what we would like to do probably is we would like to say P is an object of this type pair in pair in float. And P should be, when we create it, initialized with five and as a second argument 5 and 6.25, right, which goes into this pair. And in fact, the compiler can make that work. And to make it work, you have to change the template implementation. We should create a default empty constructor over here. And now when we create the a new constructor, we have to use call by reference and const. That's really important. And lastly, we have to use here our initializer list for a constructor to initialize first and second of this type using the respective values over here. And uh, that way it works automatically.